<laughs> I mean, this seems like pocket picks to me. Now, we were talking about how we're a little unfamiliar with Team Olympus specifically. I think I know most of the players on Exile, but Thor is the person who reached out to me uh, trying to get Team Olympus into our tournament series. Of course, Good. one thing leads to another. They're here. Berserker Thor is somebody mm. I know quite a bit. Uh, you know, a classic floatstone enjoyer. Seen a lot of Berserker Thor just grinding on a lot of different five stacks, and all the time I see them, they are locking in this bus wall. So a clear comfort pick and a lot of power behind it what I'm curious is, is this is most likely central Urshifu, right? Like, that's what's going to be clearing their center area. Or maybe Inteleon first clears for a second, but most likely Urshifu, which leads me to believe we're going to be seeing Dark Bear in this game. Uh, that's a good indication. Another thing I'm looking across is despite the strength or at least the uh, the limiting factor, the healing stoppage, if you will, of the cursed <laughs> items, there is just not one on the other side. Exile hey. is not playing with any, which means that Fable looks a hell of a lot better to me right now. Because <laughs> they said, you know what? We don't actually care. We don't need any of that. You're right. I am familiar with Berserker Thor. Um, it's like one of those, you say it and it spins. And of course, Mitsu as well. Like yeah. a neon. I mean, I'm going across here and like the, the oh, the rust is breaking off, uh, mm -hmm. breaking off the wheels here. I, cool. I feel like Kid Forrest Gump with his braces breaking off his leg. You know what I mean? Like, I'm starting to, yeah. I'm starting to run now, Zonix. I'm starting to run. All right, good. Now. Welcome back, Team Stacks. Good to have you here. Now, I, I actually think the Clefable, the other thing that it could be bringing to this team is just gravity, right? To counter Leafeon and Zacian a little bit. Sure. There's no Umbreon for classic mean look strats. So instead, if you want a good anti-dive option, a well-placed gravity around an objective or around one of your carries, a pretty decent option to make sure that they don't have huge dive potential on the other side. Yeah, no doubt. And it's going to have to be on point as well. Mm -hmm. My concern is, um, you know, the, the the gravity can stop maybe like a, a Zacian agility in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe even the, the Leafeon uh, as well. But I, I kind of think that has dim diminishing returns. I'd almost... I, I could see this as a potential follow me game as well. Just Ooh, to get out in front sure. of the Zacian and just eat, catch receipts. Let your let your Inteleon really just unload. But here we go. I mean, we've got quick pressure in the top path here. We got three folks for exile looking to pressure very early. And look at the minimap on the left side of the screen. Leafeon actually cleared both the Aselgore Scavalier, but bailed on the ball toys. So because of having that early level evolution, they hit after just getting both buffs, they hit level four. They can actually threaten that top path at 950 so, so early, well before uh, this Urshifu could even make it. Exemplify, not there quite in time, but it is going Blue Bear. So I was wrong, but seeing the item bills, that makes a little bit more sense. Solar Blade for Secure is going to be ridiculous in this match, by the way. Buzzwool and Inteleon are going to be the two ones to try to contest. It, but Pierce Leafeon with that scaling damage on the solo bit is going to be ridiculous. Yeah, now Buzzwell just trying to do work in the face of two. Uh, not going to be quite successful, but they're getting gobbled up. Sacred Sword is Ooh. out, but the Sacred Sword can't get the Buzzwell before it picks up the berries. Here comes the Clefable. Going to get a little Moonlight action on top. Going to try and top off that HP as Buzzwell's making a stand here. And now they have a real opportunity on top. Of, I think that's freaky, right? That's mm -hmm. trying to peel back on the Zacian. They are going to make it to their own side. Nice little counter punch. That Clefable coming in just in time. Yeah, Clefable with the clutch timing, but I gotta give a shout out to support on the other side as well. Hollows mm -hmm. Blissey with a perfect safeguard. If they didn't time that exactly right, that bus uh, Thor's getting that KO on a freak. No questions asked. Big surf in by Solemn to hit a couple of the members to the other side. And of course, that means Exemplify is gonna find that level seven, but Freak does get the better of Thor in the top path. That Zasha's gonna be able to stack a couple of times. I don't know if they're running stacking items, but at least getting some experience from those scores and gonna be hitting level seven as well. Yeah, Neon using that solar beam a little early. I don't think they realized the amount of pressure that Olympus had in that central. So some of that mm. able to get sealed up by the slow bro, as you mentioned, you pointed that out. And that's going to be, it's one of those, you know, it might be one of those KOs by a thousand cuts, right? <laughs> Just getting leached enough experience for Olympus to hang in here. We got the next round of birds that are up. Solar beam hits true that time. And good follow-up pressure by the Trevin at Zoinks. Yeah, extremely. I mean, just a... Uh Essentially, what it comes down to is a get-off-me tool. A huge wood hammer is one of the best deterrents you have right now in the metagame, I think. Trevenant, maybe look down on, upon a little bit as a popular defender. However, when two defenders a game are getting banned, you start looking for new options. And with Mitsu playing this Trevenant, it's looking pretty great. So shout-out to Mitsu for another role swap. I think this player has played almost every role when I watch them play. Last I saw, they were playing Central Area, Gardevoir, pretty much on cooldown. Now they're playing the defender for this team. So really cool flexibility from this player. 
Yeah, and, and that's what you need to do to get in here and get some games played. You got to fill roles. Now the Buzzwell has pressure. Now Freak is going to try and collapse and close that out. Berserker Thor is on the bad end of a nightmare here, and a Sacred Sword pierces that bug right in half. Oh, that's so tough too, right? So the superpower almost grabbing onto Zacian, but agility gives you that unstoppable keyword for just that short, brief period of time. If you time that cooldown perfectly, you avoid that huge buzzwall damage. So again, Freak just slightly outplaying Thor and wins that 1v1. A huge score in the top path is going to break that goal zone. Well, this match, uh, this team fight in the bottom path is kind of yet to pop off, but that war of attrition at the top is already showing results for Team Exile. Yeah, and they're actually forcing Thor to stay in the top path a little bit, try and get themselves at a higher level. And nobody's engaged on this uh, basement, Reggie. Everybody buying time, looking for an opportunity, but all that's doing is allowing Exile to leverage a 5v4. Finally, Thor comes in, but the rip is on in the Reggie Rock. The follow-up is there. We're going to go for a surf. Trevenant <laughs> reaps wood hammers out, but it's the leaf blade, that, excuse me, the solar blade that comes through. I thought it was. Oh. That solar blade just came out right afterwards to deal a ton <laughs> of damage and rack up some KOs with the back of the Italian. Try sorting out the Trevenant, but that is just not enough right now. Zoinks' <laughs> Exile looks way too good and way too strong. Yeah, Exile had the advantage of uh, their Zacian just having a bit faster of a clear and hitting that level 10, was ready to take that team fight, and they got all that real estate around that Reggie pit. Uh, team Olympus was waiting for Thor to hit that level 9. They gave them a little bit of central area Pokemon, and they had to play a little bit more uh, patient and just reserved so their Buzzwool could get their Unite move. Unfortunately, that gamble lost them any spacing around that objective, and just a Sacred Sorization, a Solar Blade, a Solar Blade Leafeon, and a Solar Beam Mew is just too much damage when they're just right in front of the Reggie, and that spacing is really what won them that objective. Yeah, and it did very, very well. Now, Exile being able to get some time to just get to Toll, oh, jump right on top of the Italian. Two step comes through, gets a KO, Solar Blade as well. Nice spacing by Mitsu with the Trevenant again, getting tons of time and tons of real estate for that Leafeon to work. They get a quality KO and are able to make it back despite four players, excuse me, yes, four players being down there for Olympus. Oof. Thor trying to hold down here as well as Detroit putting in some good damage as Inteleon, but unfortunately no one on the other side following. Exile, two members and a Regilucky putting a pretty solid siege on this second tier goal zone as Mew is able to just do so much damage from range, great damage from Neon as they're just laying it out from so far away, completely out of harm's way. Great stand, way to not let that Reggie Lucky hit. If that thing burns in, then Olympus is truly yeah. trying to climb itself because that is a mountain in front of him. <laughs> as quickly, Neon is going to get this as Selgor, no real trouble here, but we really need a basement Reggie for Olympus right now. Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I'm shocked we made it six minutes into this game with only one mountain reference. Uh, so shout out to us, we're really killing it. <laughs> Reg Ice Russian. now being spawned in. We're having two of the trios so far in this game, thanks to that a first objective taking so long to secure. A Unite move in from the Urshifu clears a little bit of space, but the rip damage isn't quite fast enough. All of a sudden, Pure and Neon are in range for the secure. Great solar beam by Neon from long range, cutting off the Inteleon's liquidation onto that target. Trevenant has two players in its sights, three players in its sights. Slow beam on top of the Mew. That is a late usage of that. And they are gone for that effort, Soinks. That's a massive loss on the side of Olympus. That is their best Unite move for a catch. And now we're getting follow-up KO on Inteleon. A great little lockdown here with the boosted auto and the follow-up. Exile is putting tons of pressure on, and Olympus is just hemorrhaging these resources at the wrong times. Yeah, Olympus with a great war chest, right? A lot of good options to utilize. It just felt like using them at staggered times was an unfortunate price they had to pay. And, I mean, Team Exile is just completely turning that team fight on its head. So much space was gained by the Urshifu, but that view able to hang out in the wings and find the perfect time to secure with that Solar Beam. That started everything, right? He all of a sudden, you have that Reggie buff, and you're able to charge the other direction you're not worried if someone gets buzzwell kidnapped you're not worried if someone gets slow beamed because you can know you can just take that team fight in incremental moments after that that's a great call 228 to 29 with still a tier one gold zone open for <sighs> exile that is huge dude that mm -hmm. is massive and sending this reggie Alecki down the path with five seconds to rayquaza that's a nightmare 
Yeah, right now, the win conditions for Team Exile are ridiculous in number. Team Olympus, they're shrinking very, very shortly. However, their team fight composition is pretty solid. Inteleon Unite, Urshifu Unite, and Buzzwell all Unite all readily available. Pure is caught out, but an eject button to safety is going to be tough for Thor to try to follow up on. Neon, with that laying in damage, is going to be mostly out-healed by the Clefable. So, that AoE healing really coming to pay off and really eliminating this early poke damage from Neon. The problem is, it's not just damage that's happening, it's vision being gained. Every solar beam into this tall grass is spotting two, three members for Team Exile, and they are on the hunt for Team Olympus. They are, and Olympus has the onus to do something. Oh, that solar beam chunk too. Slowbro's at half. They have to amnesia back. But Olympus now is running out of time. They're fighting the clock now too. Two enemies on the op opposing Olympus here. Nice solar beam coming through. Finally putting some pressure on Rayquaza. It's about 60% HP, but still a little bit of a school dance going on. Nobody willing to engage, but Olympus needs to make a move here. One minute left, 60 seconds. Huge lead for the left side. We know that. Gravity comes out. They're starting to rip this thing. Sacred Sword on top, big surf, and it doesn't even matter because Olympus gets it, but their shields are gonna get broken quickly. We have to see if they can actually convert on anything, and I'm watching, and I'm not seeing much of anything on the side of Olympus to make this push. Yeah, I mean, at least Exemplify finds a KO streak of two, so a 50 dunk is going to go in, one hundo burger, but fortunately it's the Inteleon Clefable with no shield is able to not able to score. So despite getting a hundo burger on one side, Team Exile is able to return the favor, and they start putting up some points as well. With only 25 seconds remaining in our match, Team Exile still is holding on to the lead. Just barely 100 points, 103, that's a hundo burger left, but there's nobody crossing the map fast enough. And of course we know the shields are gone. And that's the thing, Olympus jumped in the middle, they had to press the B button the whole time. Exile got to press A and unload everything in the kitchen sink they had onto Olympus as the players. So they were eviscerating shields the moment that they gained them. And ultimately, Exile is going to take down a pretty strong game one. Oh, yeah, and Team Exile looked amazing. Honestly, I, I wanted to give a huge shout-out to them as just the ice in the veins mentality. You lose Ray, and there's still four members of Team Olympus up. That gets to be a hectic situation. Uh, Freak and Pure really pop off, break a couple of shields, and then they still get out of that fight and find a way to score on that Tier 2 that was previously hit by the Regilecki. So, nice spacing by them to turn and burn and just keep that score lead because, I mean... I don't care how good of a team you are. You lose the Ray, it gets a little concerning. So shout out to Team Exile for holding on in that situation. Yeah, without a doubt. My big concern in Exile's um, late stage execution here is we actually had... Um, are the screens switched? Am I losing my mind here? No, I don't think Jeez. so. Who was, who was floating there? Was it Zashin? The the Exile had sent the uh, Regieleki down the path, and they had a player hanging out ready to score with 44 points. Unless I'm mistaken, was that the Urshifu that was hanging out? Yeah. For Olympus? Okay, okay. Disregard everything, throw me off a bridge. <laughs> oh, I would feel so terrible to do that. No, I, I I don't think we need to do that. I think the what we need to do is just, again, <laughs> look back at how solid Exile played from front to back in this matchup. It sounds like when that 10 minutes started, they really looked immaculate. Mm -hmm. That early game, I think, got a little sketchy in some spots. You know, that, that eight-minute bird spawn looks really, really good for Team Olympus. I thought things might slide that other direction, but that first Reggie fight, I think, set the pace for this matchup uh when it went so handedly over towards team exile they had to wait on thor to hit that nine it just felt like a little bit of a breaking point and it slid in the other team's favor so good on exile for holding on to that and they now have a 1-0 advantage in our game of course we're going to be headed into game two uh thor has their choice of first or second pick they are going to choose to swap sides so we're going to have team olympus on first pick and team exile now in that second pick position so, Zoinx, so obviously I called out, we both thought that the Blissey first pick looked a little loose, mm -hmm. but we find ourselves that Exile just won themselves a game with that Blissey yeah. first pick, my friend. Um, does that impact where Olympus goes at all? I don't think it does. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily think the Blissey was the big reason that they, they took that W there. Yeah. Um, I actually think it was more the Zashian that was really taking over in the early parts of the game. Would you tell me what you think? I mean, l lay me some knowledge. Well, I'm curious if the Blissey is because they know Buzzwell's going to be on the other side. 
Mm-hmm. If like that's a part of why they want to do that. Also, Bliss Assistance onto Zasha just seems like a really good combo as well. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I in fact, I still am la- uh, left questioning my own uh, my own decision. So I'm not too sure. We'll have to see if there's any rotations of that in game number two, or if they stick with that same strategy. I mean, Exile won with it, right? So it's <laughs> if it ain't broke and all that. Well, it's even better for Exile now because they can justify taking two high octane picks, one of them being Blissey, because mm-hmm. they still get another bite at the apple here. Um, ultimately, I think Exile probably would have gotten Blissey anyways. Um, right. But it's interesting to just give up high priority picks uh, in the other roles that mm. exist. Um, so we'll see. I mean, Leafeon uh, taken off the map here, and okay. Exile eliminates Lapras, which Lapras is going to be a public enemy today. Yes, that Pokemon is so absurdly broken, Deuce Next. I, d- <laughs> it's so unreal strong. Um, I, If there wasn't another Pokemon who I will not name, we would be complaining about this Pokemon still. It is absurd. Uh, Olympus favoring the Inteleon over the Umbreon. So very interesting. Exile going to totally lock down their support core with this double first picks. Olympus instead favoring that bot path hero in the Inteleon. Yeah, and they need to make sure that it comes alive and early because if mm-hmm. you're willing to give over an Umbreon, then you better make sure you have a strategy here. But I mean, they have this is a, they have three high quality picks here. I yeah. mean, those are massive. And you know, if Exile doesn't double defender up, I mean, you're still gonna get Slowbro maybe with your last two picks. And in that case, I mean, you're eating like that's a good team right there. Yeah. And of course, and the, like, are you kidding me? Last two picks could be Slowbro Hoopa. And then you were just going off the rails, son. In this composition, yeah, it, it, Slowbro Hoopa would look really good. <laughs> They're thinking about Come it. On. No, I think I actually no prefer the double shot. defender. I oh, my favor is going defender, but maybe we see the talent flame in this game. Oh my gosh, stop playing with my heart, Team Olympus. All right, Eldung- Eldegoss going to be the option instead. They want that team wide healing, of course. Urshifu and Zashin, both t- uh, teammates that can do great with mm-hmm. shields. But do sex, it's no hoopa. It is no hoopa indeed. But look at this. We're gonna have like a we're gonna have an aggro uh, like an aggro style Gudra. I do like if you're gonna lock in a support, Thor going with Eldegoss here, because you know, it kind of splits the baby a little bit. You kind of get a battle goss action, tons of damage can be reined in. Um, it's kind of an early game menace too. So mm-hmm. like just Eldegoss and Sashin together can really like destroy a lane. Yeah. Um, which is nothing to scoff at, to be honest. I mean, you're mm-hmm. looking across the way you have quick scaling characters but if you can catch his dodria or catch his gudra and kind of get it stuck um for a little bit i mean that's worth his weight in gold so is this this is probably gudra top right and and dodria will play central am i am i guessing correctly here i feel like that's that, what's that, gonna be i mean that, that'd be my guess and then mitsu it's on not the Trevenant it's before- not gudra central right that's not what we're looking at no uh, well I don't know what we're looking at. Doing, so <laughs> okay, okay. We're about to see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we definitely will see. I, I think that will be happening very shortly here. We are looking at some, some wild stuff. I'm excited. Double melee with Intel to hold down the attack damage and rage. I think this is going to be really good. However, I think early, this is going to be tough to see happen, especially if Urshifu finds itself not alone in the central area. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, Neo Tokyo is going to help them with the clear, but this seems like a pretty easy invade target from the side of Exile if they want to charge into and charge into Olympus's home base. No, I agree completely, which is why uh, I'm getting a little anxious watching Neo Tokyo peel up and stay in path here. It looks like they're dropping off towards the red buff. Mm-hmm. Not a bad look, but make sure that this Cub Fu can get through its stuff. And honestly, Exile doesn't look like they want to play too much on the opposite side of the map, which yeah. is kind of a uh, just a sigh of relief if you're Olympus. Uh-huh. Now, okay, as someone who has played a lot of Gudra solo queue into <laughs> Zacian when, Z- uh, when Zacian was Zacian, uh, I actually don't hate this matchup. In fact, I think you have few decent options and i'm not gonna lie one of them is acid spray do i think freak will go acid spray no but i do think it's a sick option at worlds we actually saw um we actually saw zero zero nation play the acid spray muddy water to be the zashin counter and it looks so good so we'll have to see if freak wants to go with that build if not though i mean power whip and dragon pulse are both very solid options and are kind of evergreen so fine i'll allow it 
I it actually kind of makes sense because like what are you trying to power whip close, right? right. Like everything yeah. that you have, like a Dodrio is going to get its spacing on its own. Um, where everything else kind of wants to brawl at a little bit of a more of a range. Like Umbreon mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily care uh, about something you know getting power whipped in. Now on the Olympus side, if they had a uh, Gujar, they'd love to have a power rip pull it in towards your your Zashin or your Urshifu, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Exile might actually go muddy waters here. Nope, we're wrong. There you go. There we go. Whole bunch of breath wasted for nothing as this <laughs> Gudra is just <laughs> burning it down with that dragon typing on top of Zashin. Wild that you just revealed the new Unite Mike slogan just on our broadcast, but that's totally fine. <laughs> I mean, free Wait, what? Just a bunch of breath wasted for no option. Hey, it was a bad <laughs> joke. It's like Comedy Central's, you know, time that's well our wasted. Yeah, absolutely. That's, those are our t shirts. <laughs> oh, okay, exemplify <laughs> with the call out, making sure that Neon knows that nowhere is safe, even their own tall grass and they're gonna secure a pretty nice ko exemplify with a few good moments in this early game they're hitting level six and some change they're gonna be seven before this big team fight which of course isn't their unite move but it is a really good break point for a lot of these all-rounders and just good melee damage dealers yeah, but take a look at Freak. I mean, they're level seven. I mean, they're huge up here. And now they're looking to battle with the Dodrio to put tons of pressure on Olympus. And they're getting a bucket load of points in too. I mean, this Sacred Sword is eviscerating a, a, a Blissey, but do you actually care? <laughs> here comes the Blue Shifu, gonna try and put some stress on. They're gonna try and kind of leverage one hit into the next player to see if they can change something. They're able to dodge the Dodrio engagement. Tons of damage getting rained in. Sacred Sword rolls out, but no way. It's the Sligu just sliming them down. Can you stand it? Dodrio's gonna come for the engage a KO trigger two for the slick goo and now we're a goo draw and the exile is just getting goofy out here this is why i like to call compositions like this the zombie comp and i think this is the zombie top path i mean blissey goo draw is ridiculous you try to fight freak in a bush they are literally undying unbelievable moments from them and mitsu is able to secure the reggie rock in the face of an intellion and a zashin incredible work they are going to also take the eldegoss as just a party gift and Regilecki is headed towards that tier two I mean team exile with just an incredible start to this match yeah and it's I mean it's 100% freak right like that is like, uh -huh. this Gudra was the pick and it's looking amazing right now nice slow globe snow globe comes out to get the spacing and exile despite being on the brink of getting KO'd and the Zashin coming alive actually make it out so great use of that A9 Unite this Regieleki is teetering on the edge of falling in and look at the pressure Freak just sitting on top of him just shooting the dragon beams everywhere getting tons of HP back and I cannot believe they're still sitting in the pocket getting more KO's zoinks holy <laughs> and finally Regieleki is down now you have to focus on the real raid boss which is of course this Gudra Dragon Pulse used before the they can make it to the tall grass so they can't use those two healing factors in tandem and finally two of the most powerful d attacking and damage dealing pokemon in the game topple that beast that is freak and they go down immediate pivot to score very nice and neon is not going to be able to make it in time that goal zone's left at one that is a silver lining for team olympus if i've ever seen it very easy overdunk potential in that top path well despite having a dojo to constantly contest it they score in the face great double commit onto that goal zone I love it. I love it. I mean, getting those 79 points in is huge. Mm -hmm. That's going to allow a massive overdone. Honestly, if I'm them, I'm not even concerned about hitting, getting more points into that. Leave that as like your, like your overflow valve late in the game. Focus down in this bottom path. Just insulate that tier two goal zone as the Dodrio is scrambling to <laughs> score there. And we've got 10 seconds to a base at Reggie. Olympus, again, kind of feels like they need this. Yeah, they absolutely do. And they're going to have to contest with Neon from the back angle eventually. Big engage of power. It pulls the Slowbro in. And they're deleted. Slow falls, <laughs> falls, but here comes the Urshibu. They're sliding through. They get a KO streak of two. Dodrio comes in with their Unite move back the other way. Express train going through. And look at this rush out as the jump kick hits a wall. And I can't believe they're going to make it out. But look, Olympus needed a Registeel and they get themselves a Registeel but it's the Gudra being an absolute goon in the middle finally sealed up by four players Zoinks. Dodrio showed up just to get smoked out and now Blissey's peeling back. Umbreon's like come on Chief you can do it. A9 with the hangout Avalanche Blizzard tandem but the rush continues might be a little late here. Jumping mm -hmm. into the middle and using the Unite move is the Umbreon they're trying to find themselves a KO. They're gonna get the Inteleon Zoinks. 
Finally, the goal zone is gone. The score lead is five in Olympus. You need to get the hell home. <laughs> I actually can't believe they were able to even get those scores in the first place. And look at this. Exemplify is going to make it out. Neo Tokyo trades themselves for that scenario. But I think great. that is a great call out. What a brilliant support play. I was saying mm -hmm. Cotton Guard might look nice on this team. They instead opted for the Cotton Sport. But you see why. We need these all-rounders to have the space created for them. And sometimes the Eldos can be that space creator. You jump in. You pop them up, and Urshifu Zashin can capitalize on it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that pick here. Specifically, because it's on the other, what of what's on the other side of the map. Dodrio has a very fast, but also pseudo predictable move set. Once you see it coming, you know it's going to go drill, peck, drum kick, and that's something you can actually uh, preempt by using that cotton spore. And as soon as they go in. At, at right at the end of that, they get popped, and that's a quick way to burn things like full heals and things of that nature. I love that they weren't able to spot Exemplify in that tall grass because now they have the call out that all five of them are going to be in this bottom path. They're going to leave just the Inteleon to focus on the Regia Leggy, but that's okay. They know no one is there, and Exemplify starts out this fight with a huge one. Another Unite move being used here by both the Eldegoss and the Urshifu, but they're getting quality KOs for that effort. Finally, Dodrio's poaching the Inteleon. They just ate themselves a frog that Regieleki's going to hit, and that is a good 1v1 play and recognizing an opportunity on the side of Exile. I was just calling out Team Olympus for great vision control and a good rotation. Neon just does it back the other direction. I mean, they were just like, oh, cool. You're all defending this goal zone, and only an Inteleon is defending it? I see it on my mini map. Regieleki gives vision. I'm just going to pivot. Great call out. Great call on indeed. This Reggie Rock low. Surf comes through a little bit early. Who it's going to secure it? It's the Urshifu. Now they're going to pivot. Umbreon is low. This is a quality KO here if they can get it. Nice pick up by the Blizzard. Use the egg. Forces out the Umbreon Unite. But is that just a retreat? It is Zoink. So they're wow. going to be going into this final fight down two Unite moves, just like Olympus. But however, Olympuses are about to tick right back onto the map. And now Solemn's job on this Slowbro is so much easier. That shielding mm -hmm. will not be stolen away. They get easily KOable when you try to slow beam down a target, and Umbreon just unites on top of you. You lose all that protective shielding, and all of a sudden it gets a whole lot tougher. Eldegoss also going to be giving a lot of shields that can't be stolen away, and Freak is in the mix already doing some damage and doing some healing. Inteleon able to peel back out, but the pressure continues up front. Slow Beam finds a target. It's the Gudra. Bliss is in the middle. They're so low. They get the KO. Inteleon gets the KO. They're going to be able to push now. Who are they going to follow up? Two players down on each side. Exile's looking for more, but the Inteleon is too. They're spacing out all three of them. They're bubbled and they're all packaged together. Can the engagement on the Urshifu happen? They're kind of stunned down. Big Surf to separate from the A9, but the Urshifu wants more. They go in. Can they get the A9? Lock it down. They're pivoting oh. back. Umbreon and Bliss are the only ones, the only stalwart sing. And this is what I'm talking about. The overflow valve is open, Zoinks. Exile, excuse me, Olympus can make appeal to that and get a huge overdunk, but they're pivoting onto the Rayquaza, starting to hit into that, and we're going to have a re-engagement here, but just the Zashin Unite used, uh, left. Yeah, it's a great secure tool, though, so when Rayquaza is the target, this could be the big moment, but it's Urshifu instead who grabs it. One target down, Freak is gone for over 20 seconds now, not a chance of defending this goal zone, and exemplifies throwing hands inside a mean look circle. That's two. No, come on. Throwing out more hand signs than Naruto is the Urshifu coming through, putting a mean look and putting everybody else on, in, like, in the ICU. Slowbro <laughs> getting points right on DoorDash, delivering on the doorstep here. Hundo Burgers <laughs> putting down. I mean, Olympus, what a heck of a bounce back. I love this back half of this game out of that. Oh my goodness, they're looking amazing. This Urshifu in the hands of Exemplify impressed me at every single turn. What a game from them. Also, just great little uh, great little micro fights in that basement, Richie. In particular, Exemplify was taking losing situations into positive ones. They were stuck in that mean look while uniting, and they were still able to find the KO onto Mitsuli's Alolan Ninetales. So in that situation, A9 has like 20 seconds until they can come back into that team fight on the other side of the map. The respawn mm -hmm. takes so long, and they're able to surge back. We are starting off this match one to one. Olympus with a huge comeback game. A big bounce back game, and they needed it. I mean, they got a draft of just all star picks. They're able yeah. to get Lobro fourth. I mean, you had you have to leverage that. Mm -hmm. However, you have to call out the sick 
meta read that was the Gudra. It looked phenomenal for about six minutes uh-huh. there. Uh, and <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunately for Olympus, they rec- they recognized exactly what they were up against. And they had Solemn locked down Freak with a, uh, a slow beam. The Blissessence by Hollow came through to try and pick them up. Mm-hmm. But it was everything going at that Gudra. And finally, they are able to take it down. And it was the first and biggest domino to fall after yeah. that. They kind of just got to sweep through the rest of the squad. Yeah, it feels like the power creep of the other damage Pokemon just became a little bit too much for the Gudra to sustain through. And uh, XL kind of threw all their resources towards it, like you just mentioned. Right. That Bliss Assistance being used there as well. And we talked about how the Umbreon Unite was forced out of pier uh, in that earlier team fight as well. So just both support Unites not quite hitting the mark makes that final team fight so scary. And, I mean, maybe credit to Exile for still making those final moments actually sure. contestably close. But in the end, the Urshifu grab again. And who else? Like, seriously, exemplify easy MVP in my mind of that specific match. And well, now we have had game number one be a win by the first pick in draft. And same end game number two, we are going to be switching sides again. Team Exiles chosen to be in that first draft position. A lot of credit going towards you and your call out of how good first draft pick is. <laughs> Let's look pretty solid tonight. I am, would be remiss if I see Exile go Blissey first. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again, Zoinks. Um, but, I mean, that's that's kind of my point of it not really being the X factor in game one, mm-hmm. right? Because they got it again in game two, and it didn't really seem to have um, a, a game-shattering impact, if you will. So... Exile has the opportunity to switch the script up or if they're going to go back to the things they know and love. Absolutely. They got some options. That is certainly true. And I uh, just want to give a huge shout out to everyone tuning in to Unite Mike's Mayhem already. We're topping over 100 viewers. Thank you so much, everyone, for checking out competitive Pokemon Unite. We know it's tough out there. We know the solo queue ladder is looking a little rough. Thank you so much for supporting some exciting competitive Pokemon Unite because Boy, oh boy, is that, are these last two games the reasons why I really, really love this game? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Competitive Unite's sick. <laughs> I, I've tweeted out before, like, hey, Solo is kind of, uh, uh, you know, a, a school bus on fire. It is not <laughs> a pretty sight. On the other hand, Competitive Unite with bands and all this, uh, you know, and making sure Mewtwo isn't in the equation looks pretty dope. Absolutely. And look at this. First pick Zacian. And what did okay. I say about game one? Mm-hmm. It felt to me like the Zacian was the prize, not the Blissey. Exile feels the same way. Mm-hmm. They're learning. They're adapting. They're giving an Umbreon, and they're not giving it away. Olympus not going to secure that pick. Instead, they want the Leafeon. They want to take that away from Pyrrha, which means they're just going to go back to the Umbreon. They do get an Inteleon, though, which is not something we got to talk about too often because there were so many fights happening in Top Path Deep Snacks, but um, mm. the uh, Umbreon Alola Ninetales path was actually out-leveling this, the Inteleon path like considerably by one to two levels throughout that entire match. So... Obviously, Pyramitsu got something cooking in bottom path, uh, which is outpacing an Inteleon. No easy feat. No easy feat indeed, and they're going to have to keep that pressure going. Because this is a game three here, so if they want to make it to the next step of mm-hmm. Unite Mike's Mayhem, of course. But man, they Olympus seems to really lean into this Clefable. I mean, if I'm Exile, I'm switching up just a couple items, and I am getting some Cursed Incense in there. Looks like Pikachu, if, if Mitsu actually plays it, was holding a Cursed Incense. That's what I'm looking for right now. I mean, you mm. know this Clefable, what it's going to try and do. Get in yeah, you definitely have the option of anti-heal. I mean, it is so absurdly strong on this Pokemon. It is very, very good, but you're right. I I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just favoring the Clefable more than you are in these situations, yeah, maybe often sure. or not. I, I think Hoopa right now is just sometimes those portals take a little bit too long and the damage from Exile is just too absurd. I, I think Sacred Sword is a really good answer to, to Hoopa. That damage happens a little bit before that portal recall, so maybe that's why we're seeing the pivot away. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. Um It's hard for me to justify or to pick who the true draft winner is here in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's some really good Pokemon on each side, uh, which balance fairly well. I think there's still something left to be desired for both teams. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll see. Now it's going to be truly down to skill and execution, right? Because if the the scales are balanced with the characters you bring in, 
Well, then, uh, you got to do it with the skill and the talent, something <laughs> I have none of and you barely have any. Yeah, wow, that's giving me more credit than I think I deserve, Deuce Snacks, but I, <laughs> I will accept, I suppose, if I have to. Um, now, I was talking about in game number one, Deuce Snacks, about Mitsu's ability to roll swap, and we're actually seeing it in this match. The, uh, the Venusaur being played by them, giving that defender roll over to Pure, as I think Freak is going to be taking over the top path in this rotation so mitsu probably going to be bringing the venusaur into the uh the central area or who's going to run bot i don't know some interesting draft decisions on their side but what is interesting to me about this draft is going to be olympus's double mage comp inteleon and mm -hmm. delphox that is a well it's a house of cards to put it nicely right it is so much damage but as soon as one thing topples as soon as a zation gets even remotely close to your back line that is a rough spot to be yeah, all the pressure on the Trevenant. <laughs> that is really a true statement here. And for Exile, they're going to have, of course, uh, I think it's Neon that's on the cup food. They're going to have the Neon roll through and then Mitsu switch to the Jeez. middle. Look at this. Zacian starting <laughs> to eat, though. Comfy right around their collar here. And they are putting in tons of work. Going to be able to pressure very well onto the side of Olympus. So Zacian looking good early, but we know that's exactly what the Pokemon does. Well, it is a legendary Pokemon. Therefore, it is accepted. I hate myself for saying that out loud. Uh, yeah, not yes. Great. Not great. <laughs> yes. It is so absurdly strong. One of the reasons it is so powerful is because it has that crit chance on its boosted auto attacks, even at just level two. And thanks to it running scope lens and the razor claw, it is going to have a whole lot of extra critical hit chance. You're going to see some big swings even from early Zacian. We're going to look. I'm hoping this Urshifu goes for the pounce and goes for the body here. Going in, start pressing A, and it looks like they're using that. They're using the birds to leverage into the Inteleon and trying to slide through. Ooh. Tons of pressure on the berries are gone, and that's a big KO. Now they're going to be able to get points in, and the Phantom can't even contest here as those points are reined in. Exile executing perfectly, and Olympus don't know what hit them. I mean, Neon swings bottom path. Why? Because Freak is doing just fine in top as they have just knocked out a poor, uh, not Kalefa, but the one after that. Neon with a Gale KO in the enemy central area. Really nowhere to run for that poor Braxton. And look at this. A free red buff has just populated the map. A free red buff indeed. You said Olympus has the double mage comp. You can't let them get to the back lane. Where, uh, back line. Well, it's pretty easy in the beginning of the game when you're not really fighting team fights 5v5. <laughs> Everybody's kind of scattered trying to take care of their own business here. And of course, this Urshifu is not really looking to share any of this experience. Zashin gets a couple, but it just doesn't matter. If I'm exile, I am trying to look to get this Urshifu massive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, How does this look Lefairy? <laughs> that is a question that needs to be answered. Honestly, Olympus needs to find a, a new strategy going on in this early game. You have to abandon this basement, Reggie. I, I think you have to. I think you have to throw all hands on top and try to push for a Reggie Alecki, a few scores, something. Because right now, you are so disadvantaged mm. that any combo in the game is just completely deleting your HP bar. Detroit goes down. Phantom is going to be the next one. Exile, just with too strong of a start right now for Olympus to catch up at all. And now that that goal zone is broken, that means Exile can play so far forward on the map and stress every resource that Olympus needs. Oh and you see that happening right now. They don't even care about the basement, Reggie. They just want to put the pressure on Exemplify. They know Exemplify took over last game, not let them happen again. We're going Grass Knot with this Comfy too. Nice mm -hmm. level of skill expression there. And really going to be able to set up massive KOs for both the Urshifu and the Zashi. Yeah, they're looking good so far. I will say that. <laughs> it's been absurdly good. Now, this is what I was saying that Olympus should be doing. They're going almost on a full rotate. Four oh my god, dude. Time. I just noted there's still a phantom out here, too. Yeah. I have to call that out before it evolves. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, a tough spot to be. Um, they do secure the Regieleki, so some objectives uh, secure going over their way. However, Neon is currently 1v4ing. It was a 1v5 moments ago. They do fall. A bit of comeback experience headed the other way. And Thor is close to level 9. Leafeon Unite online. The Emerald 2 set ready to try to find a target to delete. But thanks to that huge level advantage, they don't have any options. And Pure is swinging in with their own Unite move.
Yeah, they're gonna get the first KO. Leafion goes down. Solar Beam gets another one. Two players down. The siege continues. We've got a comb for Unite sitting right off. We're gonna get tons of healing. There is a Travenant trying to battle in the tall grass. Says I'm a tree, right? That should work. It doesn't. KO. See you later. As now Exile's putting more points in grass. Not gets the spacing on the Intellion who tries to close that gap and to no such avail. We got a liquidation, but who else? The Umbreon wants to eat those all day. Mm -hmm. It's like drinking tap water for them, and that's another goal zone. Go, 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 go on, my friend. <laughs> Not only is Umbreon one of the most defensive and tanky Pokemon in the game, it also had a Regirock buff to increase those very defenses, but it's also running Wish, which of course gives you more damage reduction while that little circle is moving around your Pokemon's, uh, your Pokemon's aura. So great <laughs> combination of effects for that exact situation. They're tanking an Inteleon Liquidation, no questions asked. Mitsu and Freak both at level 11, and of course the Urshifu also at level 10. Team Exile just absolutely absurd certainly off to the races in terms of level advantage we got a little scared uh, a little stare down here one v three they're looking for the opportunity oh. to poach and they jump and that is a massive catch exile did not see that coming and of course we say this all the time a comfy collar when the, the when the ride is breaking down you are also free to be buckled too now they're trying to protect the goal zone nice little mean look just traps one but the umbreon gets shredded very quickly big verdant anger comes out but they're getting dove on here that's a fly out of the clefable <laughs> gets right in the face gonna eat the solar beam the fanciful fireworks is on the goal zone so there's an opportunity for olympus theoretically to get some points and liquidations happening but the pivot is already there exile is all over him and that frog is dead yep some great ambushes utilized by team olympus great call outs great elimination of the proper targets however there's only so many you can hope to have when you're playing from this behind right you take out one you take out the zashin and you take out the zashin and that comfe that's a great pick you can push that you take out the urshifu on the other end great pick you can score a little bit but every single time the reinforcements are gonna be running up that speed flux zone because of having those outer tier goals and the reinforcements are just gonna come too quick sometimes yeah, you see the pressure uh, that's being put on just by this Reggie Alecki. I mean, two players trying to clear that. However, Exile didn't pivot to the basement Reggie. So Olympus, if they can actually get some spacing, they can go in. Fanciful Fireworks are out. Urshifu's caught in the blender. The follow-up is going to be an attempt on the Urshifu. Umbreon, maybe a mean look would have helped. And it does. That's exactly what it did. <laughs> I didn't even see them use mean look, but there you go. I'm a genius. Mean look happened. Bought the time for the Urshifu to peel out. And now Exile is looking to get another objective here. Yep. Good profit call there by Dupes Max, and not surprised whatsoever. We have pretty solid over him to kind of climb up on that score race as well. Not too bad. The giving over experience to the other side. That being said, I honestly think knocking out this Venusaur or the Zacian might be more experienced than a Reggie Netsu at this point in terms of how far they sure. were leveled up. However, thanks to some very clutch scoring in the top half, the scoreline is a little bit closer. And the Leafeon and Teleon have both hit 12. Make that 13 for Detroit on that Inteleon. So a very, very big break point for that Pokemon. The critical hits are going to be doing absurd amounts of damage. It's going to be on the Comfey and the and the Umbreon to find the healing in clutch moments, but can't be easy against the Unite moving Inteleon. No, it cannot. And I'm actually kind of concerned. At one point, Exile had a level nine, like two level nines, and there was a level four on the side of Olympus. <laughs> and all of a sudden, that experience lead has been absolutely folded because Olympus played to to make catches and executed on those catches when somebody stopped out of line and you can kind of see the profit there now all of a sudden they're only down 77 points zoinks and they got a real opportunity here to win this game with the tier one goal zone still standing all right do they take this bait though is is the sword dog gonna be worth it retcheleki is secured by a nice little bit of movement out of the delph monks that's gonna be headed towards that goal zone but no one really with the speed capabilities to find a score and come back or at least survive a 1v1 that would happen in the back line after dunking so instead they're gonna pivot around this rayquaza good little bit of vision gaining by solemn trying to rotate around the top of that rayquaza pit notice anybody flanking from either side but so far nothing gained despite how much they ventured if they have a big brain call out here and catch um catch the umbreon catch pure then they are in great luck nice little mean look on the trevenant i guess like it gave up their position but for no follow-up value and now they've given up that bush so olympus yeah. gets to take it over and really put the pressure on rayquaza they're starting to use a quick little liquidation on rayquaza they're trying to like just bait in exile a little bit mm -hmm. wood hammers are out but no real targets of value hit 
Yeah, right now Olympus plays so much better from range than Team oh, Exile so does. Up. Unbelievable. Huge Umbreon Unite. Huge Umbreon Unite move. Holy smokes. The Horn Leech pushes and bets space, but that was massive by the Umbreon. Now the Urshifu gets to go to work. KO streak of two for them. They're on the backside. They're just going to score. They're forcing the rest of the team to pivot if they can get these points in they're big. Meanwhile, Exile's hitting Rayquaza Zoinks. Oh, Olympus kind of getting scattered like roaches with the lights flipped on, and there's another KO. Talking about sunlight. It is finding its mark today, and those cockroaches are indeed getting taken, and now we're going to have another player going down. That's the Trevenant to the Vine whip and we have Rayquaza that is getting chewed on very very easily. <laughs> okay Detroit gets pretty close with this Italian but no snipe shot means you got no range damage or at least not from that huge sniper style range. Instead gonna try to get in close to the liquidation secured by Mitsu's Venusaur and well with 30 seconds left in the game that take is gonna be as good as done. Team mm -hmm. Exile swinging in with a vengeance in this game number three. That looked like their strongest performance yet. Full stop. Uh, that that was maybe the best Umbreon Unite I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> that was maybe the best Umbreon Unite I've ever seen. And that's why I just completely bulldozed you on the cast when that came through. That was nasty. That was a four-person Umbreon Unite. And it, it worked so well in tandem. Because mm -hmm. then as soon as, as soon as Pure landed and hit those four players... Neon was through, just cutting like a knife through hot butter. <laughs> just, or excuse, a hot knife through butter, just sliced through the rest of the team and was able to chain. And that's what's so fun about Urshifu and watching them play. They were able to chain one player to the next player to the next player to the next player, get two KOs on the way, and then use the last kick out of spacing to get to the goal pad and score a bucket load of points, which <laughs> flipped the attention they'd Olympus. It was just, you know, just Neo Tokyo, like, well, am I supposed to go try, try to stop this score, trying to get back to the middle? Because that whole time, Exile still had three players ripping Rayquaza, Zoinks. Yeah. Just great call up by Exile. They were in that position because of how powerful their early game was. And Olympus had a couple of options at a comeback, but it felt like Team Exile was stifling those at every turn. Really, really impressive stuff from them. I'm excited to see more from Team Exile in our finals, obviously, which will be happening later tonight. Fortunately, Team Olympus is going to be going home. However, in that game number two, I think is something to hold on to. They had a really impressive performance. It looked awesome to see. So look out for Team Olympus in future tournaments, Unite Mics or otherwise, I think they are a team that I'm excited to see more from them for sure. Yeah, Berserker Thor and crew, keep your head up. They played great. Mm -hmm. uh, Exemplify, Shining Star in that second game on the oh Urshifu as well, yes. which almost kind of makes you feel did uh, Exile kind of reprioritize their Urshifu pick to make sure that it didn't go back into Exemplify's hands. Mm -hmm. I think you could make an argument that that is a yes. So love to see some new names uh, come into Unite Mike's Mayhem. Great scrap for a, a round one matchup here. Absolutely. Exile moving on, but we still got to sort out the other side of the bracket. Before we take a break zoinks who are we going to see there uh we are going to be seeing team spinal versus team drip reborn i think is the full title we'll probably be calling them team drip on broadcast oh, but drip. it's gonna be uh, i'm gonna be a real banger i'm excited to see it team drip's been having some pretty solid tournament performance recently but so has spinal it's gonna be awesome to see the form of these two teams currently in our off season and currently in the middle of season four unite mike's mayhem more action right after this